another day at the office. It's a hard movie, you know, but uh, very rewarding. There were days when there were thousands of extras. I just want to see this movie. Entertainment Tonight has all the stories you never knew about the stars of the Indiana Jones series. I'm not sure the, the story has been told. The plane that crashed during a scene with Harrison Ford on board. The illness that threatened to shut down production. He just kept saying, I've got to get back to the hotel. I can't stand up. At that point, I was quite ill with dysentery. And why Harrison wasn't the first choice to play Indy. George and I both wanted Tom Selleck. He actually came in and tested. How Steven Spielberg met his future wife, Kate Capshaw, behind the scenes. She had a just a light in her eyes that just lit up, lit up my heart. I wasn't very interested in doing the movie, but I was very interested in meeting him. He was caught up in a world that overwhelmed him in the end. The tragic death of Last Crusade co-star River Phoenix, the 911 tapes, and the photographer who witnessed his collapse after a fatal overdose. He fell to the sidewalk and began having convulsions. Indy's sidekick all grown up and rare footage behind the scenes of the swashbuckling sequels. Kids don't try this at home. Why Harrison chose to do many of his own stunts and his dangerous co-star. Well, I think everybody got bit by snakes. You had snakes, you had bugs. Catherine Zeta-Jones and her early indie role. Yes, I've been in an Indiana Jones. The secrets of the series special effects and the latest on the planned part four. I would adore to do another one. It's Indiana Jones behind the adventure. Toughest job I ever had. This is Entertainment Tonight, the most watched entertainment news program in the world. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Entertainment Tonight as we unearth the secrets behind one of the most successful film franchises in history. I'm Bob Goen. And I'm Jan Carl. With a crack of his whip, he stepped out of the jungle in the summer of 1981 and instantly won legions of fans all around the world. And while it's hard to imagine anyone but Harrison Ford playing the archaeologist rogue, the role almost went to another actor. <laughs> Now on three, all five. Action. Yeah, we don't have enough snakes to make the team work. It was movie history in the making with George Lucas as producer, Steven Spielberg as director, and Harrison Ford as the swashbuckling archaeologist Indiana Jones. We had um, nothing but fun. While Indy lost out on The Lost Ark, Raiders did score five golden Oscars and spawned two successful sequels. Harrison's trademark leather jacket and fedora were even enshrined in the Smithsonian in 1989. But the then 39-year-old actor almost didn't get his hands on that whip. I just did Star Wars, and he was in Star Wars. Let's try to get a fresh face in here. George and I both wanted Tom Selleck. He actually came in and tested and did a wonderful test. So we went ahead and hired Tom, and then CBS stepped in and said, wait, we have a contract with Tom Selleck to do a movie, a TV series that hasn't aired yet called Magna P.I. To whom uh, I'm forever grateful. <laughs> Why are you here I need one of the pieces your father collected. Lucas actually dreamed up Raiders at the same time as Star Wars. Well, after Star Wars, I was on the beach with Steven, and he was talking to me about how he wanted to do a James Bond movie. And uh, George said, well, don't waste your time because I've got something better than that. And he said, this is better than Bond. It's called Raiders of the Lost Ark. So we had the title all worked out. The idea was inspired by old Saturday morning serials. But that's not the only reason George wanted to make the film, as he revealed during an interview on the set. I'm really doing it more than anything else so that I can enjoy it. Because I just want to see this movie. To write the film, Lucas and Spielberg hired an advertising executive named Lawrence Kasdan, who would go on to co-write two Star Wars sequels, as well as write and direct The Big Chill. We went off almost immediately to a house in the hills in, in Sherman Oaks to work out the story for Raiders. George essentially was the leader in that sense. It was his story and he essentially guided the story through. Um, I provided a lot of the set pieces in the movie, the snakes, the rolling rock and things like that that came out of my warped mind. And, uh, and before you knew it, we were in Tunisia making a picture. The first shot is going to be following our principles of Africa was just one of four continents on which they shot. Stephen wanted to make full use of the unique setting. Big colorful food stand over here. Yeah. And maybe some other... Now, the thing of it is, he has to have room for that bullwhip. 
Tunisia also presented a variety of hardships from the searing heat to the thousands of extras who didn't speak English. He has to serve all his friends. Yeah. But the toughest element proved to be the water. We all uh, finally became ill, except for S Stephen, of course, who arrived with a full case of SpaghettiOs and gaffer taped his mouth every time he took a shower. Harrison's pain actually led to a classic Raiders moment. A master swordsman had been hired for this scene designed to showcase Indy's prowess with a whip. It was scheduled for two days of shooting, and Harrison was like this. He just kept saying, i got to get back to the hotel. I can't stand up. He was back and forth, back and forth from the loo to the set. At that point, I was quite ill with dysentery. So I went up to Stephen uh, as soon as I arrived, and I said, uh, Stephen, why don't we just shoot this some bitch and Stephen said oh my god well, I was thinking that too and so we did it was not the only time Harrison helped punch up the story Harrison is contributing so much to the writing of the script to the story to just the general feeling of the film but he's one of the most inventive actors I've ever worked with there's a very funny picture that they sent me of Stephen and Karen and Harrison all sitting at a typewriter on the set, you know. And that's how they handled it, really. Harrison also had no problem letting his actions speak louder than his words. Harrison was very tenacious about wanting to be seen on camera. Uh, as Indiana Jones, being a hero and being an action figure, not just being a guy, you know, in a close-up who takes the whip and goes like this, but Harrison's heroics nearly led to catastrophe in this sequence when his dangling legs interfered with the plane's flight. I'm not sure that uh, the story has been told. We're actually unable to, he was unable to use the rudder of the, of the airplane to control a direction. And we took off and we crashed just around the corner. No one was hurt in the crash, but Harrison pressed his luck when he was dragged behind a truck. Have you ever done anything like this, dragging behind a car? I roll, camera! No? <laughs> just uh, one more useless experience. Okay. I'm sure it's not dangerous. See, if it was dangerous, we would have waited until we got more of the movie done. Toughest job I ever had. Actually, Harrison's tough job was far from over. And coming up on E.T., we are on the set as the actor faces some frightening co-stars. On the set for one of Raiders' most infamous moments. I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if Indiana Jones, you know, is like in this room with 2,000 snakes? The secrets of Indy's amazing special effects. The models, the mine car chase, and an explosion 1,000 feet up. Steven Spielberg remembers the first time he met Kate Capshaw and the relationship that led them down the aisle. And we're catching up with Short Round, 16 years later. We always refer to Steven as the guy in the beard and the mustache. That's coming up.